thanks for checking in to the channel all right uh before i get into the lesson there's also another channel mr wilson and he do tutorials and pass paper questions on his channel you can go over and check out his channel it's very interesting i will leave a link in the description below all right so let's get into the lesson so the topic for today's lesson is major cropping systems all right the aim of the lesson number one to define cropping systems number two to list and explain the different cropping systems all right so we're going to get into the first objective and that is to define cropping systems all right so the definition of cropping system cropping system are the different ways of growing crops that is what we are going to explore today the different ways in which crops can be grown now we have a number of them and we are going to look at those so what i'm going to do is to go through eight of them so we have number one here monoculture two multiple cropping or mixed cropping number three intercropping Number four, crop rotation. Five, strip cropping. Six, contour plowing. Seven, mixed farming. And eight, cover cropping. Monoculture. Monoculture is the continuous cultivation and production of only one crop on the same piece of land for years. For example, the production of sugarcane, banana, etc. So, this is basically quite simple. So, on the land, as the prefix says mono, mono means one. So it means that one crop is grown on the land for years. Every year is the same crop that is grown. And these are normally permanent crops. All right, so here I have a picture of a planting farm. As you can see, there are no other crops on this piece of land, only plantings. All right, so please check out this clip. Only plantings are planted on this farm. A perfect example of monocropping large amount of land is used and the crops are there for many many years all right so let's move to the advantages and disadvantages of monoculture advantages number one mass production of food for the fast growing population is done number two farmers become specialists because they focus on the cultivation of one crop for years it is done where extra surplus can be sent to a factory for processing, etc. It's a good method for that. So that helps to solve um, food security issues. All right, so the disadvantages. It encourages the build up and rapid spread of pests and diseases which attack the crop. Second point, high chemical usage and pollution. So because the crops are on the land for so long, you, what you will find out is that pests will get used to that area and those pests will build population around the area and feed on those plants. And what you find out coming from that is that once there is pest attack, the farmers will tend to use chemicals. And when chemicals are used over a period of time, that will result in pollution. Let's move to the other cropping system. All right, mixed cropping or multiple cropping. Multiple cropping or mixed cropping is the cultivation of two or more crops simultaneously on the same plot of land. Note briefly, it deals with crops only, no animal. Crops are chosen carefully so that, number one, some crops have shorter growing period and others longer growing period. Number two, crops grown at different heights. Number three, some are deep rooted as top root system and others are shallow rooted as fibrous root system all right so there are certain principles that are very important when you are doing mixed cropping so there's a psychology towards mixed cropping so you would not just go and plant some crops like that it's very important that you know how to mix your crops to get or to maintain fertility in the soil all right so let's check out these pictures of multiple cropping all right, so here you have a banana farm over here. Here we have scotch bonnet peppers. So right away, you know that this farm, it has 
more than one crops. So once you have two or more crops, you could easily say that that's multiple cropping or mixed cropping. Over here, these are beds ready for other crops where other crops will be planted. All right, over on this picture here, we have a planting walk over here, right here now. We have pineapples here and right here we have melon all right so the melons are young and if you notice right here we have dry grass and the soil so the land is mulched and it is for the melons to grow on all right so eventually this year will be covered with melon so here is an example of multiple cropping all right so please check out the video all right here we have an example of mixed cropping there we have the papayas And in between the papayas, we have the pineapples there. All right, so this is a very good example of mixed cropping and to be specific, intercropping. All right, so we have the coconut plants and in between we have the papaya and the pineapples. All right, so the advantages of mixed cropping, which are the good things. Number one, constant income can be acquired because crops are intentionally planted to be harvested at different times. Number two, control of soil erosion as different crops provide different form of vegetative cover to the soil. Number three, a variety of crops are produced. Number four, a reduction of pest infestation. So overall, there are a lot of benefits as you can see. All right, so the next one here is intercropping. All right, so intercropping here is also another form of multiple cropping, but there is a specific principle that is followed. So let's get into it. Intercropping is the cultivation of short-term crops, such as lettuce, between other crops, such as sweet peppers, hot peppers, etc. Some advantages are, number one, farmers earn quick cash from the lettuce while the sweet peppers developed. Number two, land space is used up more efficiently. All right, so the diagram here demonstrates intercropping. So here we have sweet pepper plants from planting to harvesting, it takes two to three months. So what you notice when these plants are planted, they are planted at a distance. So here would normally left without any plants, right? So this space, is used up in planting the lettuce instead of having the land here this space here with weeds all right so with this method plants are planted in between each other and the land the soil is used up as much as possible all right so the other one here is contour cropping contour cropping is the planting of crops on hilly lands horizontally Imaginary horizontal lines running across a hill is referred to as contour lines. It helps to conserve the soil on sloping land. The land is plowed along the contours and then crops are planted. In this way, soil erosion through every rainfall is prevented. All right, so contours are normally found on hilly lands. So that's where you find your contours. Now contours are imaginary lines that would normally run across the hill, not up and down the hill, not vertically. All right, so let's check out these diagrams. So on this diagram, here you can see this represents a hill. Now the crops, we have three different types of crops that are planted here. All right, so here we have the okra, here we have the carrots, here we have broccoli. So please note now that here, so let's start with the okra right here, is plowed. All this area is plowed. The other areas are not plowed. Right here is plowed. Right here is un not plowed. Here is plowed. So what will happen when water comes down from the hill? Down, the water will seep here and will run horizontally. Now when water runs horizontally, it will run at a slower rate than if it was coming down straight. If the water was allowed, if the plowed land was this way, then the water would run very quickly and hence it will remove more soil and end speed up soil erosion or increase soil erosion. All right, so 
let me show you exactly what the contour lines would look like compared with the gradient lines or what we say the vertical lines so this diagram here demonstrates the contour line it shows the contour line so remember they are imaginary you will not see these lines in real they are just imaginary and they go across the hill so this is the hill and the lines go across like that all right Let's read what we have here. Increases water flow and soil erosion. So this year is not suitable for agriculture. This practice, you don't want to plow your land this way because it will create a gutter. And that would increase water flow and soil erosion. All right. So this is also another example of a hill. So here, your contour line is like that. So this line, this is where you would plow the land. All right, so you plow a land, right? along this line which is the contour line and you plant your crops along that line let's go up to the key points number one plowing is only done along the contour where the crops are planted so you would not plow this here here key number two the contours when plowed up as a soak away and gutter and lowers soil erosion all right so when you plow along the contour it will eventually act as a soil conservation method let's move on all right so this diagram here shows opposite the contour line so if you should plow the land vertically and plant the crops vertically what would happen this plow here would act as a gutter or soak away and hence speeds up the water flow down in it which would eventually speed up um, soil erosion all right so let's check out the key point the plowed area will act as a soak away and a gutter this will facilitate water moving rapidly down the hill. Rapid moving water will erode the spot. All right, so this is not suitable. This is not a suitable practice. All right, you want to keep along the contour lines. All right. All right, key points of contour cropping. Number one, barriers are not necessarily placed in between the crops. Right. Number two, the horizontally plowed areas would act as an underground gutter. Number three, water runs slower on hill when it is moving horizontally and faster when it is moving vertically. Number four, soil erosion increases with water speed. All right, so the other one is strip cropping. So again, the strip cropping is a form of multiple cropping and it can be a form of contour cropping when it is done on hill. So you can do strip cropping on a hill you can use the method on a flat piece of land. All right, so let's get into it. Strip cropping refers to planting different crops in narrow bands of varying width, a certain measurement, on flat, undulating, or sloping lands. It is normally used as a soil conservation measure on slopes. It has similar advantages as multiple cropping. All right, so let's go to a diagram. All right, so this is a diagram showing strip cropping on Ililan. All right, so here, crops are planted here. You have the broccoli. Now, importantly, now you have a grass barrier. So with strip cropping, a permanent barrier, a crop barrier, for example, in this case, is put in between the strips. Of crops. So you have the broccoli here. Then you have a permanent barrier of grass. And this is to hold the land, all right? Then here you'd have carrots, then you have your barrier, then okra, then you have a barrier. All right, now with strip cropping also, not just that you want to make a bed, but because you have a permanent barrier, you're able to level off some of the air in the bed. All right, so here in this diagram, we have strip cropping on flatland. So of course, here we are in this bed here, we have the corn. So you try to keep the width of the bed of all the beds the same all right so in this case all the beds are four feet wide all right so you have one strip of crop here your walkway here another strip of crop your walkway another strip of crop walkway another crop walkway another crop so here we have the corn for example cabbage in this bed string bean lettuce corn in this bed so it is also a form of mixed cropping all right, key points. Number one, it's a great method for preventing soil erosion. Very, very, it's a very good method on hilly lands. All right. Number two, the bands of crops are narrow and flat. You try to keep your, your beds very narrow, especially on the hills. You 
want to keep them very narrow and that would eventually limit soil or prevent soil erosion. Number three, on a sloping land, strip cropping is done between unplowed barriers. Alright, so you'd normally have barriers in place when you're doing your strip cropping on your hill and you would try not to plow where the barriers are. You try to keep your barriers permanent, alright? And the barriers are there to prevent the erosion of soil or the washing away of soil particles or movement of soil particles. Number four, it is a form of mixed cropping. All right. All right, next one is phase cropping. Now, phase cropping is a system of continuous crop cultivation and harvesting. The first point here, a plot is divided into four sections okay very specific here the second point the planting dates are sequenced so that there is continuous cropping and harvesting of the produce all right so let's look at this diagram for example so here we have four plots in plot one we have corn plot two carrot plot three string bean plot four cabbage all right so with plot one the corns they are planted in order to reap them or harvest them on October the 22nd, 2020, all right? So the carrots over here, they are planted to be harvested on November the 4th, 2020. So that's a two weeks break right here, right? Now this string bean here, they were planted in order to harvest them on this 18th of November, 2020, all right? So that's another two weeks slot here. And here for the cabbage, they are planted to be harvested on December the 2nd, 2020. So as you can see, the crops are planted strategically to get the crops coming into maturity at two weeks apart. All right, so by the time all these crops are harvested, more crops will be planted. So when this one, the corn is harvested, another crop will be planted here to catch another date. All right. All right, advantages of phase cropping. Number one. It maintains a regular supply of produce to consumers and steady income is received. Number two, prevention of oversupplying or glut of a commodity which would have the effect lowering the price on the market. If a farmer goes on the market with too much of one crop and the consumers are not purchasing those crops, then those sellers, because they have too much on the market and they're not getting them sold, they would have to sell them very cheap and they might not make back a profit. All right, but with this system, it prevents that oversupply or glut, which would be a disadvantage for the farmer, but of course, an advantage for the consumer. All right, so the next one is cover cropping. So, all right, so that word is very important cover cropping. So, as it says here, the land is covered or the soil, all right. So let's get into it. Cover cropping is the planting of crops that would run and cover the surface of the soil. For example, pumpkin, sweet potato, cucumber, melons, for example, are planted. All right, so here we have an um, example of cover cropping, which is a melon. So in this case here, the melon here is used as a cover crop. So these are your melons. They run on the soil. Now, when they are fully mature, you would, you would not be able to see any soil, all right? So the melon here is a perfect crop to use as a cover crop. So let's look at the advantages. It prevents splash erosion. So splash erosion is a type of water erosion. For example, when rain falls, the rain would normally come down with a force. And if that force of water in soil, then those particles would tend to move away, especially if the land is plowed. All right, the second one, it reduces weed growth, all right? What would cover cropping do is that it will keep the soil covered and so other weed seeds won't be able to germinate. All right, the next point here now is crop rotation. Crop rotation. Crop rotation is the cultivation of selected crops on the same plot of land, one after the other, after each have been harvested, all right? Crops can be selected based on characteristics such as if the crop, number one, crops are deep rooted or shallow rooted. Number two, crops are fruit crops, 
such as your tomato, seed crops such as your beet, leaf crops such as your cabbage, and root crop such as beetroot. So what this is saying is that crops are selected to be planted on a piece of land based on their parts, based on certain characteristics. Now, let us get into, let us look at this diagram to help with the explanation. All right, so this is a diagram of crop rotation. So here is the line that the crops will be planted. So we have three types of crops that are selected based on their parts consumed and they will be planted on this piece of land over here however they three of them will not be planted at once all right so let us explain more in detail let's look at the selection so here we have the string beans so the fruits from these crops are consumed all right then after string bean is harvested we will we are going to plant the cabbage on the land now the cabbage here is a leaf crop the leaves of these plants are consumed then the next type of crop that we are going to use in this crop rotation is carrots now the carrots is a root crop so the root of this crop is consumed so as you can see we the crops are selected based on their parts consumed and they are rotated based on those principles so we will not plant on the land a leaf crop and then go back and plant a leaf crop after that first leaf crop is harvested the crops are changed up all right so the land here let's start it is very important to start with the legume plant so say the string beans are planted on this piece of land after six weeks seven weeks or eight weeks those string beans would be harvested right now after those string beans are harvested the farmer would not go back and plant string beans on the land the farmer would go to the second crop of choice which is cabbage and plant the cabbage on the land after the cabbage has been harvested, the farmer will go back and plant carrots on the land, which is a root crop. All right, and then the cycle will start over. The farmer can change up the crops. However, now there's an important point why it's very important to start with a nitrogenous plant, a leguminous plant. The thing with legumes, those from those plants from the bean and peas family is that they produced nitrogen in the soil and nitrogen is used by leaf crops to grow their leaves so very importantly they these plants contain a bacteria referred to as rhizomium or nitrogenous nitrogen fixing bacteria and what these bacteria do is to fix the nitrogen gas from the atmosphere to nitrates in the soil in the root nodules of those plants all right so after you planted your legumes the soil then would be rich in nitrogen which is a nutrient that the plants would use right so it is very important to plant a leaf crop after your legume plants very very important all right so here you can see it says crops are rotated on the land after each have been harvested very very important so you will not plant string bean carrot and cabbage on the same piece of land at the same time if you do that you might not control the insects you might be able to control the nutrients but not the insects all right now there are many different types of crop rotation this is just one form of it all right so let's move on all right, so all crop rotation controls insects. All right, so these are the crops of choice as we selected earlier. So we have the string beans, the cabbage, and the carrots. So the question is, how can this rotation of crops control insects? Now, let's use examples. So string beans, 
The cucumber beetle attacks string beans, but not the cabbage. All right, so what will happen here is that after planting string beans for the first time on the plot of land, it would be attacked by a beetle, or if it is attacked by a beetle, when you harvested these string beans and plant cabbage, because those cucumber beetles do not attack or feed on cabbage, these cucumber beetles that were here feeding on the string beans would not be able to get any food when the cabbages are planted. So their population will get disturbed. They would have to relocate to an area where they can get their food. Alright, so the same thing will happen when cabbage is planted. The diamond black moth will attack the cabbage, right? But what happens after the cabbage are harvested and carrots are planted? The diamond black moth would have to seek other areas for food, other plants for food. So they would move from this location because there are no longer any cabbages there. Alright, so when the carrots are planted, the carrots may be affected by the carrot rust fly. Right, but what happens when these carrots are harvested and string beans are planted again? What will happen is that these carrot rust flies would have to relocate, all right, to find another food source. So let's get into how crop rotation balances nutrients in the soil. All right, so here is the three plants that are rotated. Now the string bean. What happened? Let's read what it says about the string bean. Fruit crops use up mostly potassium and leave nitrogen and phosphorus in the soil. So what it's saying is that the string bean here, which is our fruit crop, it will use up mostly potassium nutrient out of the soil. All right, so what will happen when you plant the string bean, it will take up the potassium nutrients in large amount and leaving mostly nitrogen and phosphorus in the soil. So this area of land which the string bean is planted on, it will have a depletion of potassium out of the soil. All right, so now what happens is that when the string beans are harvested and cabbages are now planted, this is what will happen. Leaf crop use up mostly nitrogen and leave potassium and phosphorus in the soil. All right, so leaf crops like your cabbage and your callaloo, they normally use up nitrogen in large amounts. And what will happen is that on this piece of land, you will have mostly the built up of potassium and phosphorus in the soil. All right, so if you go back and look at the string beans here, they will use up mostly potassium. But if you notice when the cabbage are planted potassium will get a chance to build back up in the soil all right so nitrogen will be used up while potassium and phosphorus will be built up and when the carrots are planted the same thing will happen phosphorus will be mostly used up and potassium and nitrogen will be built up so this method of crop rotation it will help to balance the nutrients in the soil it will help to maintain nutrients within the soil. It prevents depletion of one nutrients in the soil. As with monoculture, it will use up one type of nutrient because for maybe 10 years, 20 years, you are cultivating one type of crop on the land. Well, that is not so with crop rotation. All right? So how crop rotation balances nutrients in the soil? Crop rotation prevents the depletion of one set of nutrients by not planting the same crop over and over on the same piece of land. All right, so let's move to the other one, mixed farming. So mixed farming. Mixed farming is the production of both crops and livestock on the same farm. All right, so the difference between this one now is that with mixed farming, you have both plants and animal production being taken place on the same land. But if you notice all the examples before, they only deals with crops, all right? So please note the difference. You have mixed cropping and you have mixed farming. So mixed farming involves both animal production and plant production. All right, so as we said, so this is a picture showing you that with a mixed farm, you'd have your crop section and you'd have your animal section on the same land. 
All right, advantages of mixed farming. Number one, crops remains can be fed to animals and reduces feed costs. For example, kalaloo remains is fed to rabbits, etc. All right, number two, manure from animals can be used on crops and reduce fertilizer cost. For example, well broken down chicken manure incorporated into pactroy planting beds. Number three, consistent income can be acquired. All right, so even though this will have a lot of benefits, as we can see there, there are some disadvantages. All right, so, well, here I just outlined one of them. Animals can be very destructive to plants. So if you have a big farming going on, you have to make sure you contain the, the animals, secure them as much as possible and secure the crops. So you'd have to do a lot of fencing. You'd have to spend a lot of money on fencing because if those animals get away, they can be they can eat the plants and destroy them. All right, so we are at the end of the lesson. And in order to get automatic update of videos, please subscribe to the channel. But not only, please hit the bell icon. So it's important that you know that you can actually subscribe to the channel, but you do not receive videos. In order to receive all your videos, the bell icon it has three options ensure you hit the all option so you might see private you might see none you want to hit the all option to get all the videos if you do not you will not get all the videos automatically and also please tell a friend or two about the channel thank you for watching at the end we have other questions we have practice questions so watch to the end